But why do you why do you think it's important for us to make this? Well, it's been a big part of our life, and it doesn't need to be a secret. It is one of the biggest regrets that I I have. Yeah. Anyways, I can feel emotional thinking about it. Yeah. 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 Thanks for sharing that. Mm, thanks. You need to pause it all? No, it's okay. <sighs> So I shared on my Instagram this post and it contained a few vulnerable things that was hard for me to share. Got a lot of love. So I appreciate for those of you who did leave a comment or sent me a message. And one of the things that I put on that post is that there was one more thing that I wanted to share, but it involved both of us. And what we are going to do here on this video, on this podcast, is share with you what we don't want you to know about us. Something, something that has been going on behind the scenes and uh, I think that, why do, you, why do you think it's important for us to make this? Um, well, it's been a big part of our life yes. that we haven't been sharing about, which I think has been okay up until this point. It's been like a personal experience, but I think it's gotten to a point where, you know, we just know that a lot of other people and couples struggle with this and it doesn't need to be a secret. So we want to share about it. Yes. Yeah. So over the last woman share it. Sure, yeah. So over the last, how long has it been? Okay, so that's a good question. I think that it began in January. I don't think it's quite a year. Okay. When did it begin? Maybe December? Nine-ish months. Nine, 10, 11, 12. (laughs) One of those months. Between nine to 12 months, we'll say that. Over the last nine to 12 months, (laughs) we have been trying to have a baby. Mm. And the challenging thing is that it has been difficult for us to conceive. And... Uh, I'll share from my perspective, like one of the things that we've been doing to solve this challenge is, you know, get testing and find out, change diet, you changed diet, like did so many different things, Mm -hmm. hired people to get supplements and Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. do a lot to get prepared for this. And it has been a struggle. I guess I'd love to share a little bit about, a bit more about like the emotional experience. Please, yeah. And I also want to say this is the second time that we recorded this podcast because the first time we recorded it. Honestly, I was feeling emotional about it that day. And Mm -hmm. I noticed that when we recorded it, I was a little bit like shielded, you know, like I didn't want to cry and I didn't want to be emotional. And so I was kind of like holding it in. And so I I wanted to do it. I asked if we could do it again. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, for me, it's been, I think that I had the expectation that we would just get pregnant the first time we tried. I did Mm -hmm. have that expectation. Yeah, I wanted that because I hope we heard so many stories of people who also had that experience and like, they, they, it then created this fantasy that we're going to create a story where people are well for me i'll speak for myself but that's what i wanted just we just knew yeah yeah know? yeah or like for me it was like we decided and we it just happened we just happened yeah. and you know what well, well we'll get to that i'll leave that there but I'll, I'll share a little bit about like the emotional experience of it it's been i mean it, i just have so much compassion for women who struggle with and couples, women and couples who struggle with not getting pregnant because it's been such a roller coaster of yeah. being excited and then having to wait such a long time to find out if we are and thinking mm. we are and then taking a test and then we're not and that's so disappointing and then and then trying again and wondering what's wrong and mm. should we be doing something different or is it just not time yet and do we need to surrender and trying to find that line between doing um the things like getting the tests and 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 eating different or whatever is needed and then also trusting god yes and also this experience like this last nine to twelve months has also been a really big time of change for us you know coming to god we got married we moved because initially we were trying to get pregnant before we got married because for us that wasn't a problem then um we, we yeah we we weren't on our journey with God then even, you know, it's, it's crazy. We were in a very different place. Yes. It has been a while since we actually, we haven't posted on our YouTube channel or made a podcast for a while. So yes, we have moved. We went from being in Bali to now being in the USA and, uh, yeah, just making here home for now. And, uh, yeah, it, it does feel great as well, knowing that when we do get pregnant, that we are going to be here compared to, you know, moving and, or being in Bali. So, uh, it, there are a lot of blessings that have come out of this as well. Um, but that, it has been difficult. Like what you were sharing, you know, what's wrong. I remember when I got tested and, you know, Bali, I got tested in Bali and the results weren't so great. So there is something called motility and morphology uh, of the sperm, of 
the sperm, a semen, sperm. <laughs> and then, <laughs> semen analysis was what it's called. Uh-huh. And then it wasn't too great. The tests weren't too great. And I was, and in my mind, I was like, there is something wrong with me. This is all my fault. I'm just putting the mm. blame on myself mm. for why it is that we're not able to conceive. But then I went to Australia, literally a week later, did the same test and everything was totally fine. And I found out that the tests in Bali, where a lot of the tests, it's, it's a subjective test. So it's, yeah, it was really comforting knowing that everything is okay. It's just, uh, but I, you know, th- that feeling, I remember just feeling so sad. The thought of when I got the test, and I got the results back and just feeling so guilty. I'm like, wow, it's because of me. We're not able to conceive and mm-hmm. also just had me realize how much I do want, how much I do want a baby mm-hmm. because of the, the, the temporary feeling of like, whoa, what if we can't have a baby? Had me realize like how much I do want this. Mm-hmm. So how many, how many tests do you think that we have done? It's probably six or seven. Yeah, but okay, so, so there's something else to this story because we haven't tried every single month. Can you month. give me the water please as well? This. Oh, uh, the other one. Oh, because we, we haven't tried every single month. It's not like we've tried like 12 times because we, yes. just started to, we decided to start trying and then we got really close to the wedding. So we didn't want to be like one month pregnant then. I didn't want to be nauseous. So we stopped and then we started again and then we decided to move to the US and we we're like, okay, I can't be six months pregnant trying to move. So mm-hmm. then we stopped for a, a few months. So I think over that amount of time, probably like five or six. I think six. Yeah. Six or seven. So we've There's got a lot, lot of videos. A lot of videos. To, to, to someday make a compilation of when we are pregnant. We yes. <laughs> got the content of mm. behind the scenes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I love your vulnerability just in sharing the Thank you. About the test. Did you go through that? Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like thinking that it was my fault or like mm. I wasn't capable of getting pregnant. And mm. yeah, for me, it just brought up. It brought up this fear. So I had an abortion when I was 19 years old, which was 11 years ago. And I remember as I was trying to make the decision, I spoke to this one man who my mom really wanted me to talk to a couple people because she knew about it. And and, um, anyways, I just remember speaking to this one guy and he told me that if I got an abortion, I'd never be able to have kids again. Mm. That's how I remember him saying it. I don't know if that's exactly how he said it, but that's just what has stuck in my mind all these years. And in my early 20s, I didn't want to have kids. So I was like, I just don't even care. Like, no problem. And then really, when I was 26, maybe I was realized that I did want to have kids and that was right before we met and so then there there has been this little tension within me since that time of just questioning what if I can't get pregnant Mm -hmm. and believing that but and not fully believing him right but just being present to the fact that nobody knows if they can get pregnant until they do it is a tender and unknown thing to step into If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, for like every woman, I think, or a lot of the women I've talked to at least. And so then having that experience and, you know, I think coming close to God and and, and having the whole experience that we have over the last six months, I've really gotten to experience a lot of healing around having that abortion 11 years ago. And I think I really needed that. I know I really needed that because it was still really alive in me. It was like clanging around in me of like, how do I move past this or how do I even feel about this and Mm. I've gotten so much clarity about that through this journey and gotten to have a real chance to have forgiveness for myself and experience forgiveness from God and yeah just so just a whole process I've gone on with that so that felt really necessary and I'm glad to have gone through that but that 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 fear has been there of just like what if I what if I ruined my shot yes I don't think that's true and I I know that's not true actually but like that's been the fear Mm. yeah yeah Speaking of abortion, it did. I think I told you about that video. So what, something I haven't actually shared this online, mm. but one of the things that I did uh, in 2020 is I also had an abortion with an ex partner. I, mm. I remember watching a video only a few weeks ago, and just I remember just tearing up hearing about the guy who was speaking about his story and how he wrote because uh, he had he went through the same thing and he wrote. Uh, the baby a letter did I tell you about that yeah yeah we talked about it yeah do you remember because I had said I did that oh yeah you did but we, we can go into that, that. but sorry I finished yeah. story and I remember just feeling emotional just thinking about that and it is one of the biggest regrets that 
I, I have, you know, just be, I, I wish I knew what I knew now. I wish I saw videos of abortions. I, w- I just didn't want to, kind of like with veganism, but I just didn't want to see what goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. And I just thought that it was totally okay. It doesn't matter if, if you know, just get an abortion. It means nothing. It's, just, it's nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's life. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, I definitely experienced a lot of guilt that I didn't, feel until i started to really learn about this and going through this experience as well just the the craving of wanting a little one running mm, around yeah. and yeah yeah that's but i love that you went you went you did the same thing you wrote a letter <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i felt that as i was going through this healing process with god i just felt the inspiration to do, to do a few things one of them was to watch a video of what actually happens in abortion and yeah, it's so sad because I wasn't I wasn't even in my first trimester when I when I had an abortion. I was I was I don't know how many weeks it was so long ago now, but I was past that point, so I didn't take a pill. I like got the the surgery, so I was like out and unconscious and stuff. And and I just had never like you. I didn't want to know what happened because I was scared um, to know. But but then it's it's like that dissonance that the culture tells us it's no big deal and everybody gets it um but we know we don't want to know what happens yeah. you know and yeah anyways i do feel emotional thinking about it yeah. yeah so one thing that i did was just like watch a video it wasn't like a real life one but just a a car- uh, not a cartoon, an animation. animation. Yeah. And just showing like what actually happens. And I'm like, wow, like I think if people saw this, but then we people would understand like this is not, mm. this is not um, okay. This is not a clump of cells. It's a baby that they're literally like ripping apart. And it's so, so tragic and so painful. Yeah. So that was one thing. And then the next thing was, um, yeah, just like having this, um, praying to God about it and, um, yeah, writing a letter to the baby and like naming the baby myself and Mm. yeah, it was, it was a good process to go through. It was helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Mm, Thanks. You need to pause it all? No, it's okay. So that's what's been happening. Yeah. yeah. It's been an emotional yeah. ride over here. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> what I'll say about all of that is like, I really needed to know like the truth about that stuff. You yeah. know, like I needed to see that and like feel the sadness and yeah, even be humbled by the process of not getting pregnant. Mm. You know, like I think if I would have just gotten pregnant, I would have been like, it's not hard. Yeah. Everybody can just decide and get pregnant and like yes. manifest a baby because that's like where my mindset was then. Yeah. I'm like, wow, I'm so grateful to have to like lean on God and yes. trust him and trust our timing and mm-hmm. trust that it hasn't been time yet. Yeah. I didn't, you just made me remember like in the early stages because this is when we were just coming to God. I remember doing Dr. Joe Dispenza meditations, tuning into new potentials, like manifesting and just like seeing the baby. And the next time that we, you know, had sex, you know, just imagining that this is going to be the time. And it definitely has had me, you know, has me, has had me really lean on God and just trust God. And yeah. I want to add something. Mm. Okay. So the gifts of this, you said a couple already, but I just want to touch on that because there's been so many gifts, obviously a lot of the things we've talked about today have already been the gifts. But one thing that I've really loved about this is that when we decided to have kids, I've talked about this on social media, but you weren't fully sure. Mm. You came to being sure Mm. and clear, but through this process, we both just really got into want it together. And I've really gotten to feel more of your wanting it yes, and like being very sure that you do want it, Mm. you know, because even when you said yes, I knew you were clear and I knew you meant your yes because I trust that. I know you wouldn't say it if you didn't mean it, but 
um, I didn't necessarily feel like you're, oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited because yeah. you just weren't there yet, right? If, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm right about that. And the reason and what helped is to share the story. I think we shared on, a, on your old podcast, right? Yeah, I feel like we have talked That's about fully that. gone though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. So because Kelly deleted all of her, all <laughs> her <laughs> podcast. But just the summary of the reason why, um, yeah, when we got into the relationship, I was not wanting to have kids at all. And a big reason is because I grew up in a really big family. You know, I have so many brothers, five brothers, and it's growing up in a household where there was four brothers, I just didn't have my, I didn't have a lot of space and there was just always noise. So I always craved quiet, quietness. And the thought of having kids just made me give me like, I, I just want quiet, you know? So what changed is when uh we kelly rescued two kittens one day and brought them home and i was in me was i was resistant at first right you were excited at first I was excited but then at first. i think day two we were like all right so we're getting rid of these yeah. right the thought of just responsibility <laughs> not getting rid of them but yeah. you know giving yeah. them to someone and, who wants yeah, getting them adopted <laughs> yeah and then there was one day where kelly went away she was on like a, a little getaway with her friends and i was there with the two kittens and I was watching rugby. I remember I was sitting on the couch and normally I'd be alone just watching rugby, just doing my own thing. But it was like one of the first, outside of being with you, but one of the first times with like, just having little beings there. And I was like, I would not have this any other way. I love this. And it was like a little chink in the armor of, is that the right word, chink? Yeah, yeah, yeah a little so. chink in the armor. <laughs> <laughs> little chink in the armor of my mind where I'm like just so resistant to the thought of having kids and then the more that I just had these little beings just on me and around me it just had me fall in love with them and then I'm like you know what I could I'm open to this I'm open to this and then I started watching videos from like Jordan Peterson about kids and other people just sharing their experience with kids and I spoke to friends with kids and it just had me be open to this even more um, so mm -hmm. then I was like all right I'm in, let's do this. Yeah. Yes, it's going to bring challenges. Yes, the, the you know, what our life is now is going to die in a lot of ways. Yes, my ability to have quietness and, <clears throat> and space isn't always going to be the same the second that the, our little baby is born and I'm okay with that. Yeah. New chapter. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yes. And one thing I want to add mm. is I just am grateful that we're, we're settled in the U.S. and that we get to just be, yeah. be here, know where we're staying for now. And from that place of groundedness, get pregnant. Yeah. And I see why God did it. And now we're, we're close to God and we're settled and we've gotten to have this whole forgiveness, healing journey. Yes. And now we get to talk about it. And that feels very important. Yeah. So thanks, God. Thanks, God. <laughs> yes. I'm excited for the day that you do the test, we do the test, and then mm. it's a two lines, right? Or one line? It's two lines. Two lines. Yeah. yeah. It is coming. So you guys will get to celebrate with us. We're going to have a big party, I think. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I feel complete. How I do you feel? I feel complete, yeah. Great. Well, we love you all. Thanks so yeah. much for watching. If this has inspired, impacted you, influenced you in any way, please let us know. We'd love to hear it in the comments or on social media somewhere. Yeah. So. Love you all. See Love you in the you next guys. video. Yeah.